Dr. Sabika, hi, welcome to the Big Move Podcast. Thank you for having me on. It's so nice to be here in real life. I feel like I'm in a talk show here with you in your beautiful clinic. Thank you for having me and thank you for joining us today. It's my absolute pleasure. So it's the first podcast recording in person for The Big Move since pre-pandemic life. So I'm very pleased to have you as our first one. I feel like it makes the conversation more dynamic. There's more to work with. And it's just nice to have you in the flesh. I have to say I'm a real people person. So having you here is absolutely fantastic. Amazing. Um, so Dr. Sabika, can you give our audience a brief background on like who you are and what you're all about? I'm Dr. Sabika Kareem. I'm a specialist aesthetic doctor. I've been in practice 15 years, um, and I'm glad to say that I really have the best job in the world. My job is about making people feel good by looking amazing every single day. I love that. And we have literally all of the questions for you. I can't wait to get into everything. But I guess so for this podcast, it's called The Big Move. It's all about those big moves in life, those risks that we take, those big life transitions. And so for you, we're literally sitting here in Northwood in your gorgeous clinic, Skin Medical. Let's talk about that. Like, when did you launch your clinic? Like, what was that like? Was it scary? Like, tell me all the things. Even though I've been in practice for 15 years, um, I'm, I'm also a trained GP, so a proper doctor. Um, and the way we train and what my life's mission is all about has been helping people. Um, and I wasn't really a business person. So you're right, taking the plunge uh, and setting up my own clinic all on my own um, during the middle of a pandemic in June 2020 was actually a really big decision. But I just felt that, you know, I was delivering awesome treatments, but patients weren't getting exactly what they needed, that sort of five-star end-to-end wraparound service where it's really just about the patient. It's about what they need. It ab it's about having the time, taking time out and discussing things. It's not just a quick fix. These are long-term relationships that we build with our patients. So launching something different, something very boutique, something that centers around the patient so that they're getting every treatment that they need, you know, with only best in class treatments and sticking to what we do best. I felt that that was something that my patients really needed. And I took the plunge, uh, like I said, middle of the pandemic. And I have to say that thankfully we've done really well. We're going from strength to strength. Um, the team is growing. We've curated a lovely team. And, you know, we're getting new devices and new treatments that come in all the time. Um, and hopefully today I'll be able to share some of my favorite ones with you. Yeah, absolutely. We can't wait to get into all of it. And I guess to back up in terms of your career, like how did you get your start in skin aesthetics? Specifically, was this something that you always like had a passion for and loved? Like, I guess, take us back. So ever since the age of 10, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I knew that I wanted to help people. And that started when, you know, my father was sick and he was in hospital and thankfully he made it out. But I just saw the difference that doctors can make to people's lives. Um, it wasn't until I got a little bit older. Um, I'd attended medical school um, and I was doing my GP training, but I realized the impact that feeling and looking better can really have. So some of medicine is about being preventative. Some of medicine is about those really acute situations and saving lives. But my area of medicine and my expertise is all about um, optimizing the life that you have, improving the quality of your life by making you feel more confident, feel yourself, um, and actually, that's the bit that really drives me. I love making people feel better about themselves. So I love that. I love your approach. And I feel like, right, you're all about just sort of like optimizing women's sort of like natural features. Is that sort of like an angle that you take or is, are we taking it a step further? Um, it, it's actually going a little bit further than that. It's not just for women. It's women and men. Um, and men have got savvy. We know how they've got savvy about fashion, handbags. They've also got savvy about self-care as well. Um, but it's not just about optimizing features. It's about preventative medicine. It's about making sure that you look and feel as good as you do now for years to come. It's about reversing some of the damage that's happened. And it's about making people feel comfortable in themselves from top to toe. It's about having the confidence to be able to go around without your makeup on if that's what you want. It's about, you know, a pet peeve you've had all your life and sorting that out. Or it's just about wanting to look in the mirror and recognize yourself again rather than seeing your mom or your dad looking back at you. Yeah, fair, fair. So who are your typical clientele? Like, is there a certain demographic? I love that you said men and women, love that. Uh, so there isn't one particular type of person who comes in. We see patients all the way from the age of 18 
my oldest patient at the moment is 97. So, you know, we have a really wide age range of people. Um, they come for all different reasons. And, but what the, the common theme is that everyone wants to look and feel better about themselves. And the nice thing is that sometimes it just takes us a com it just takes a consultation with someone and we say, actually, you look great, you're doing all the right things and you don't even need anything. And even just you knowing that that's what you're doing for yourself, sometimes that's enough. And sometimes it's about making small changes. Often people will come to me when they've got their big moves in life. So it'll be things like they're just about to get married, their child is about to get married, um, they're just getting divorced and ready to be on the single market again and want to be optimized. It's about moving careers, having a new job. And I see lots and lots of new moms because their bodies have changed, their faces, you know, I'm a mom, I've been pregnant. Your face changes, everything changes, and sometimes you just don't feel like yourself again. So it'll be people um, who want to come in just as an everyday thing, but often I will ask in my consultation, you know, is there something that's bringing you in? What was the driving factor? Is there something we're preparing for or something that we're tidying up after? Sure, sure. That makes so much sense. It's almost like that that confidence booster, maybe that little like boost that they needed in those sort of like life transitions. Absolutely. And it's about feeling like yourself or your best self every day. Yeah, when absolutely. You look in the so you talked a little bit about your approach. What's your specific area of expertise and like what kind of treatments are people getting when they come in to see you? So it's everything non-surgical medical aesthetics. And that ranges from just advice about skincare and preventative aging. So things like antioxidants to catch the free radicals to keep your skin youthful, vitamin A, you know, these are the things I would recommend people do anyway, um, even on a younger skin, um, to all the injectables. Um, and that's from top to toe, from, you know, from your head to your body. So people think injectables are just for the face, but they can be for the body as well. Okay. Um, we do uh, device treatments, so uh, needling radiofrequency that keeps the skin firm and tight. We've got treatments that help with muscle tone, fatty bulges, really anything that you could want without going down the surgical realm. And I, I understand you have a really natural sort of like understanding with your clients, a really natural approach. Can you walk us through what a consultation would look like with one of your patients? Of course. So um, when the patients come in, obviously we'll make them comfortable with teas and coffees. It's a really kind of friendly, welcoming environment. There is no rush. The pace is really different. It's not like quick in, quick out, uh, which I really love. So often we'll sit down just as we are now on the sofa with a cup of coffee and we'll have a chat. It's more about what the patient's concerns are, things that you know have been bothering them, things that they just want, and I, I stay quiet. So you know, for the first 15 minutes of the consultation, I might not actually say anything. It's just literally a forum for my patients mm -hmm. to offload and tell me everything that's been bothering them. Okay. Then we get into the whys and wherefores. Um, we talk about aging, we talk about things that you know are possibilities that can be done. Often I'll ask my patients for pictures from 10 to 15 years ago, maybe even um, maybe even longer than that. Um, and usually we can't find them on Instagram. They'll be on Facebook. So we go Fair. back through their Facebooks to see how their face has changed or aged. Some patients will come into me with pictures of things that they may want done. And some of it's unwinding those myths. So it's about you know, people coming in saying, can, you, can I have these lips? Um, no, you can't. You can only have your own lips. Can we, can we enhance them? Yes, we can, but they'll still be very much in keeping with your own lips. Um, when we do um, reversal of aging or tiny tweaks, you know, we can work with what you've got, but it's more about restoring and optimizing you so you look your best self rather than someone different. During the consultation, patients get to ask me all the questions that mm -hmm. they want after we've recommended all the different treatment options. Um, and then we don't normally do a treatment. We will send you home with loads of information, an email that's bespoke and specific for you, and then you will have time to look it up, do your research. I encourage people to Google things and come back with more questions mm -hmm. before we actually make the firm treatment plan. Yeah, I love that. Like you're really allowing your patients to sort of explore it on their own. By the way, what you're describing, it sounds like a therapy session with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's quite like therapy, but actually it's funny because lots of my patients do say that coming here is like a feel good club. Yeah. And often sitting around the reception, you know, we'll have a few people. Thankfully, now that we can after COVID, you know, it was really difficult when we had that strict one in one out policy with a half an hour gap in between. It's much more of a social club. People come and they share their experiences mm -hmm. with each other. And oftentimes 
I'll be inside my consulting room with a patient and people are sitting outside and they've already shared their stories and they go, I want what she had. And I'm like, okay, but maybe it's not the right treatment for you and maybe it is. But, you know, the great thing about the clinic is it's got such a good feel good factor when you walk in, even if you don't have anything done. Um, and that's why I think that's why I think our business has grown so beautifully just on patient recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, setting up a new business during COVID and I haven't spent one penny on advertising yet. Um, I think I'm quite lucky because because people feel good, they then recommend it to their friends and bring them along. And that's, you know, just how we grow. Absolutely. That's astounding, too. Yeah. Just like natural word of mouth. You've been able to create this this really amazing group of clientele. And you've had such success throughout your whole career. And I know on an international level, you're a lecturer and opinion leader for some of the the top brands in aesthetics. What do you think has attributed to your success there? So I think there's a couple of things there. One is definitely experience. Two is that within the realms and boundaries of safety, I like to push the boundaries a bit. I like to try new things um, in a very safe, scientific, <coughs> measured way. And sometimes, unfortunately, they're on my own face. But <laughs> um, there are things that, you know, we can develop protocols and techniques that, you know, we've been doing for years that are only now becoming part and parcel of what's accepted so for many years, I was reticent to fill sort of the middle part of the face, you know, giving that really kind of bulky look. It's not about big cheeks and big lips, you know, for everyone. It's it's more about those subtle enhancements in some way that I've been working for years. I think the other thing is that not only do I push boundaries um, within the bounds of safety, but it's, it's more about sharing. And, you know, what I love to do, obviously, I love the sound of my own voice. You can hear that now. But what I love to do is to teach. Um, and if I wasn't going to be a doctor, I was definitely going to be a teacher. And I'm just really lucky I get to do both. So I like sharing techniques. I like to teach. I like to be open. And unfortunately, in this industry, um, it's not the same as some of the other medical specialties where people share their knowledge. You know, people sometimes think that if they hold back, they can do it for their own patients or their own clients. Whereas I think it's completely different. I think if we share really good practice and we raise industry standards, you know, it will be better for everyone as a whole. And I was at a great event yesterday. Um, Sinclair had uh, an event where they had an expert meeting. And you know what the nicest thing about that was? We all had our talks to do. We, we were on stage and mm -hmm. we were lecturing. I thought the best bit was the question and answer sessions where actually there was a bunch of expert doctors, surgeons, um, dentists in the, in the audience. And they all got to ask questions and we had such open debate and conversation that it's really pushing the industry and driving us all forward together. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I, I really love the, the education piece of just sort of everything that you just shared. And also you can hear the passion. Like, I feel like that's probably set you apart. You can hear just like you sitting here talking about it right now. I have to say, I love it. I love teaching. I love training. It's one of the most satisfying things when um, when you know when you sit and someone says to you, you gave me that idea, you gave me that tip, or you know I've been doing some training uh, in central London, and yesterday one of the attendees at the expert meeting said, do you know I was I wasn't injecting tear troughs, and then since you taught me a few weeks ago, I've done my first few, and they've come out beautifully. So again, we've changed someone's practice, we've upped their sure. game, and we've helped give them improved results for their patients. I mean, what could be better than that? Yeah, absolutely. So skin and beauty aesthetics has become a really hot topic, obviously throughout the last many years, but I, I do sort of feel like it's being talked a little bit more these days. Would you agree with that? What is your sort of perspective as an expert in the field? So I think um, definitely 15 years ago, it was for sort of the select few. It was your dirty little secret and nobody would confess to having anything done. And then it became much more uh, mainstream and what I find is that my younger patients, so especially the millennials, mm -hmm. they are much more open to talking about what they've had and they've opened that conversation. And I love the fact that the conversation's been opened. And what I'm finding now is that because it's more acceptable to talk about having treatments done, um, it's like, you know, people in my mother's generation would have would have said that they didn't have gray hair and they never had it tinted. You know, I ring up my friends and go, I'm going for a root tint today. But, you know, aesthetics has become one of those things that the conversation has finally opened up. And I think that that is the best thing that could have happened because, you know, this explosion in aesthetics and making people feel good mm -hmm. is 
is, is awesome. In the UK, we've got a small problem in that it's really not that well regulated. So people have got to be really careful about who they go to and whom they will trust with their faces. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, you know, these procedures, they're beautifully safe in the right hands. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I guess to set like some groundwork, my personal experience in aesthetics, and this mm -hmm. is something we got to know each other a little bit this past fall, and I shared with you sort of where I'm at in my aesthetics journey, I guess we'll call it. And I feel like, you know, I'm 34, I'm not 25 anymore. I feel like I want longer term results. Personally, it's not enough for me to go and get like a squeaky clean facial or a really hydrating facial. You know, it's it's going to make me dewy and glowy. But after a few weeks, you know, I'm looking for longer term results. Hence why I think skin aesthetics is really interesting. I have mild rosacea, so I've dabbled in IPL a little bit of LED radio frequency and I guess the most intense treatment I've ever had is Profilo and you can probably explain this a lot better than I but essentially that's like a hyaluronic acid skin booster right yeah you you did it perfectly okay so it's a non-cross-linked hyaluronic acid okay hyaluronic acid is a protein that we naturally have um, that occurs in our skin and these are synthetic versions of that um, and these are little so that particular filler profilo is a long chain with little short chains attached okay injected into your skin so it's really a skin booster travels through the skin and just holds moisture in the skin for right you. right and so one of my goals with the podcast is to do exactly this just share like what other options there are for women out there basically and just educate so i'd love to flip it back to you what's been your personal experience with skin aesthetics so my personal experience, I'm quite naughty and I'm more of a, a, a do as I say and not as I do person. So I have been really good lately because um, um, I had a minor big birthday. So I'm 45 now and I have um, started being really good with my skincare because I think that preventative skincare is really, really important. So for me, it's um, a vitamin C serum in the morning, which is antioxidant, okay. catches the free radicals, stops the, the skin damage. It's definitely a sunblock SPF 50, without a shadow of a doubt. I'm right there with you. Um, <laughs> then after that, sort of at night, after you cleanse and tone, I've started on my vitamin A products. I mean, I've been using those probably for a few years, mm -hmm. but I've upped my game on that, okay. which is really nice. I do have fillers. Um, which would be, you know, be cheeky of me if I didn't, I guess. And I started having fillers probably at the age of around 37. Okay. But I want them still to look really, really natural. And for me, it's that the, for the moment I, I decided to have them, it was I looked in the mirror and I didn't feel like I looked like myself anymore. You know, it's just those few signs of change and aging. Um, and so all I needed was a tiny bit of filler in my cheeks, my chin, just to optimize um, I like needling radio frequency and we've been having some awesome patient outcomes with that and I've been meaning to have that for ages and my staff finally sat me down and said right we're fed up of seeing everybody else's results we need to have this treatment so I've had radio frequency on my face for the skin I do regular skin care um, and I have filler so I have my Lee extreme in my cheeks and define in my lips and volume in my chin okay I love it. Thank you for sharing all of that. My pleasure. But I, I do have a follow-up question. I feel like microneedling and radi radio frequency is talked about a lot more. For the audience that maybe just doesn't have that much knowledge around it, what's the difference between both of those treatments and, like, I guess, benefits? So microneedling um, is just needles uh, that are put into the skin. And the idea is to break down scar tissue should you have some. So it's good for acne scarring. But it's also to stimulate collagen. Unfortunately, the type of collagen that you get with the needling is not as organized. It can be quite disordered, and you don't get as much collagen stimulation as you do with radio frequency. Now, radio frequencies can be broken down into different devices. You've got the ones um, that are just on the surface of the skin, and the whole point of radio frequency is to drive um, heat energy down into your skin, into your deep dermis, to get your fibroblast cells to start making collagen. And guys, we stop making collagen when we're about 25 years old. So, you know, even at your age, sure. all the collagen you've got now has to last you through the rest of your life unless you're going to do collagen stimulating treatments. Unfortunately, with those kind of treatments, um, it's really difficult to get the right temperatures and you need to be about 43 degrees in the deep dermis. Now, that's quite hot. So, you know, it's really not that easy. So actually, there was a huge change um, and... There was a huge change, and now that we've got needling radio frequency, the whole point of the needles in that 
is that they deliver the energy exactly at the right level in the skin. Um, and that stimulates heat that can then make those fibroblast cells make collagen. So you get a firmer, tighter, smoother skin. And, you know, for my younger patients, it's preventative going forwards. And for older patients, it will actually give you a slight lift and much, much better skin texture. Okay. That's such a helpful breakdown. Thank you. It's my <laughs> pleasure. I've bored you half to death, I'm sure. No, no, not at all. It's like we want to understand sort of like just like the education behind it. I think it's just helpful to make that that educated decision as a consumer to understand which one maybe you want to dabble in. So the best thing you could do is rather than making that decision yourself, it's like going to the doctor and saying, you need to prescribe me this, mm -hmm. is actually have a consultation yeah. and actually get your expert advice on why they think that that treatment is going to be the best for you. Ask them, okay, so you've recommended X, Y, and Z. What are my alternatives? Why are you recommending these? And then do the research and make your own informed decisions about what you do going forward. You know, when people walk in and they say, I need this done, often that's not what they need. They want to look a certain way, but to get to that point, we may have to do something different, completely different. Yeah, that's a really helpful, tangible tip. So thank you. I guess getting into injectables, fillers, Botox, all that good stuff in a little bit more detail to set the stage. What are the sort of like key differences between some of those main fillers and, and, and then Botox? So Botox um, is actually a brand name. So botulinum toxin, it relaxes muscles. So the only thing it can do is to relax muscles. Um, and it's the muscles that we relax in the frown lines and in the forehead that give you that smooth appearance. It can be used, um, I probably use it in about 20 different places. So it's not, you know, people know it just for the forehead, but actually it's a really helpful tool in other places. Like for, you know, for people with um, bulky masseters who grind their teeth, if you've got a dimpled chin, maybe if you've got those bands that go down your neck, there are so many different uses for it. Um, so that's completely different from a filler. There are two types of filler. Normally, they're the collagen stimulating fillers, which we, um, which are much more specialist, um, and you know, not that many people have them compared to the hyaluronic acid fillers. And it's the HA fillers that are the mainstay of most people's fillers. Um, that's what most people will have in their faces. So, in this country, we have close to two hundred HA fillers licensed for use. Now, how in all that plethora are you going to find the right one for you? So for me, it's all about, for my patients, it's all about quality. It'll be a filler that I trust from a company that I trust, where I know the manufacturing process, where I know the chain, where I know it's get coming from a really reputable pharmacy. It's every step of the way. You know, I'm only going to do the best for my patients and I'm only going to do for them what I would have myself. Yeah, absolutely. And HA has become, it's, it's such a buzzword when it comes to skincare. It's such, mm -hmm. it's, that's personally my favorite skincare ingredient. I just feel like it, it does. It plumps your skin, you're retaining water. It's, it's amazing. It, it's when it, super hydrating. Exactly. And so I guess when it comes to an HA injectable, like what are you offering to your clients? Like what kind are you going for? Like what does that look like? So I like cross-linked hyaluronic acid um, because if it's non-cross-linked, it's a skin booster and it's not going to last. Um, and the one, my, my product of choice, actually, is a product called Mylee, which is relatively new. Now, I used the same HA for the last 14 years prior to that um, because I was really happy with it. And to be honest, it's a really great product. Um, when I tried Mylee, though, um, the difference I found was astounding. And, there, and, and out of 200 HAs almost on the market, I mean, I, I wasn't quick to change. I can tell you that now. The difference with Mylee is that because it's got... Um, more physical cross-linking. You don't need the chemical cross-linking as much. Um, and what that means is if you've got a long spaghetti, mm -hmm. the long spaghetti will get tangled up with itself, easy to get on your fork. Whereas if you've got short spaghettis, they're not, they, they don't tangle as well. And what we want for an HA is the tangle, the natural tangle. What that means is that it will give you more lift and more volume, but it will be more elastic and more supple. So for me, for my patients and myself, it's m it, the thing is about natural results. Mm -hmm. Our faces are dynamic. And when you see these before and afters in 2D, they're like, you can see one and then you see a result with the second one. Awesome. But what you don't see 
is how that face is in expression when it's moving. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always talking, you're smiling, you're laughing. It needs to be dynamic. It needs to be elastic. And for me, I like it to be soft. I mean, we've all seen people, you know, and I'm not judging, but we've all seen people um, who have lips that look so firm that they're almost not moving. Sure. That's something that, you know, I would hugely avoid. Um, and for me, the filler has to be soft. It has to be natural, it has to be elastic. And that's why I picked my Lee. Yeah. And in fact, can I share something interesting with you? Yeah, Do absolutely. we have time? Yes, we have time. Um, absolutely. <laughs> I was talking to a doctor yesterday uh, at this meeting. I keep mentioning this meeting, but it, it was it was so much fun. And um, she said to me, you know, I've always wanted my lips done, but I would never have the fillers that I was using in my lips. Previously, she goes, since I've had my Lee, I am going to get them done. And for me, that was a huge change because it's not just me saying it. It was a case of it, it changed my practice in doing mm -hmm. lips. That's the first change I made. And then now I'm using it all over the face because I feel it gives me a much more dynamic, much more soft um, outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess on the note of injectables in, in general, are there any myths that you want to like debunk around the procedure? Myths for injectables. Um, more is better. That's probably um, a myth it's okay. about placing it strategically okay um another myth is that anyone can do them just because you can get a good aesthetic outcome doesn't mean that you are qualified to manage anything that comes after that um, and the last thing is all ha's are the same i can categorically tell you that's not true um, it's like saying all cars are the same. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna spend money having a good treatment with a good filler, that is the best thing you can do. Okay, fair, aesthetics. fair. And then I guess like, who is this treatment perfect for? Like, is it a certain life stage, like a certain age, or is it none of that? Honestly, it could be for anyone. So I don't have a huge young client base, and young I'm talking sort of, you know, eighteen to twenty four. Um, the ones I do see, it's mainly about straightening noses, mm -hmm. um, enhancing chins, maybe a little bit of cheekbones, and then we do preventative things. Um, and then sort of if we move on from that, it really does suit everyone. Like I said to you at the beginning of the podcast, lots of people have a life event or a big move that precipitates mm -hmm. them coming into the clinic mm -hmm. where we are getting them ready. But lots of people just want to look great on Zoom every day. Yeah. Or on Instagram. Fair enough. Without having to use the filters. So I have had patients who come in and go, can you make me look like this filter? The answer is no. You're not going to look exactly like the filter, but at least we know what's in your head and we can make you a little bit like that. So the idea is that everyone becomes a hashtag no filter. Fair. That's what Miley is for. Okay. Okay. I love it. And, and what does a procedure sort of look like? Is it painful? Like, can you kind of talk us through like side effects, um, any downtime? Of course, of course. So um, is it painful? The answer is no. If it's done correctly, it shouldn't be painful okay. at all. Um, normally, I do all my injecting of my Lee with a cannula. There are a very couple of uh, exceptions to that. But a cannula is like a blunt needle. And okay. it's really, really safe. And the reason that, that you know people can have fillers and go out. I mean, I've, done, I've had filler and, and gone straight out to a, a massive party is because now that we're injecting with cannulas, you barely get any bruising. My, most of my patients don't bruise. They're gonna, it's going to be barely noticeable change. There's barely any swelling. Um, so what does the procedure look like? Um, you'll come in, um, we'll do photographs for your before and afters. Um, you'll sign a consent form. Your face will be cleaned and prepped if we're doing your face. If we're doing your body, those areas will be cleaned and prepped too. Um, and then we make a tiny little hole with a needle and pop the cannula in, which you won't feel. It just feels odd, not painful. And then the filler is injected into um, either just under the skin or down to bone. And actually, you can see the results immediately <coughs> after the procedure. So when we're doing faces, I often do one side of the face and give my patient the mirror to have a look to see the difference. Because if you don't do that, people get up, look in the mirror and go, I don't know what you've talked about. I've always looked this awesome. So, you know, it's about patients knowing that they'll see the difference immediately Yeah. after the procedure. Things that, you know, the side effects. Yeah. You can get a tiny bit of swelling that lasts a few days. Okay. Occasionally people bruise. Okay. Um, 
And that's basically kind of the main side effects of fillers. Okay. And I guess when it comes to a procedure like this, like why is the physician sort of like at the core of this? And then also, do you have any recommendations for like finding the right doctor to give you a treatment like this? So the, the reason the physician should be at the core of the treatment is because they are the expert. They will do the right thing for you. Okay, you may think you, you want one certain thing. It may not be the right treatment for you. It's all about knowing your medical history. It's all about us knowing the atan- anatomy, knowing how to optimize your face to give you the best possible outcome. It is also really important to go to a doctor or um, someone who can manage complications because even though it's a really safe procedure, just in case things don't go according to plan, they will know how to best help you and sort it out and resolve it. And that's why it's really, really important to find people who are properly trained, properly qualified. Um, I think there are places that we can go to, to find those. Like I said, most of my patients come to me by word of mouth referral. Mm-hmm. So my top tip would be ask um, ask your friends if, you've, if they've had work done that you like. Mm-hmm. Ask them who they've been to and where they've gone. Failing that... Um, one of the most important things you can do is I know that Miley uh, is only supplied to very experienced practitioners um, and there is a um, clinic finder. So if you go to, I think it's Miley.com, you should be able to find the clinic finder and find a physician in your area who can offer you that same level of treatment. Okay, that makes so much sense. And thank you for like offering those tangible tips. So Dr. Sabika, what does the Miley filler actually feel like? I've got a sample here, so I can show it to you if you like. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. So that's the box it comes in, um, and it is a clear gel, as you can see. And for guys, you, if you're on the podcast, you can't see this, but I'm going to make some noise. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm just cracking one of these babies open. And what it is, is it comes in a one mil pre-filled syringe like that. But if I pop some on your hand, you're going to tell me what it feels like. So you can imagine having this on your face. Okay, cool. Okay. And can you rub that in? Yeah. And just tell me how it feels. Ooh. Does it feel like the HA that you put on your face? Not at all. Like the, a- the HA you put on your face is like, you know, it's it's really liquidy and smooth. And this one is like, it's bouncy, almost mm-hmm. bubbly. Like, I mean, you can describe it a lot better than me. So <laughs> no, I, I wanted you to describe it. So you can see that I'm putting tiny little dots onto my hand. You can see how it nicely sticks together. Um, But what I wanted to show you, and I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, is that it just has this bouncy texture, doesn't it? And that's why I love Miley. It's quite elastic, it's quite bouncy, but it's quite soft. It's actually very hydrating, so I'm just going to rub it into my hands, but that will be the most expensive moisturizer I've ever used. (laughs) There you go, perfect. I guess switching gears, and thank you so much for all of your knowledge and education today, but switching gears, I know you are a mom of two. Yes. Your kids are 15 and 20. They are now. Okay. So how are you juggling business, personal life, home life, like any tips, any advice for moms out there? I won't say it's not been challenging. Um, And I'm a really hands-on mom. And they are a bit older now. But, you know, if you think that they need you less, the older they get, that's a huge myth. They just need you more. Oh, boy. In a different way. I'm in for it, huh? Yeah, you are. Absolutely. (laughs) But I wouldn't change that for the world. I've done every single school run. Well, almost. um, You know, and... I, I really value the time I've got to spend with my children. Um, and I've always worked around it. But, you know, my patients, a lot of them are mums too. So everybody's understanding of the situation mm-hmm. uh, and what we do. So, you know, top tips for running, juggling a business and being a mum. First of all, don't miss out on time with your children. That doesn't come back. So I can categorically say that I've sent my son off to university and I have spent loads of time with him. I did all the cricket matches. I, you know, went to every piano recital. So I was there for that. It just means that you're going to be putting in lots of hard work once they're in bed and once they're asleep. Right. But they can then come and help you. So I had my son working in the clinic with me, you know, over the summer holidays and he was awesome. Yeah. So they, you do get payback. I love that. And I can totally relate to like, right, the kids go to bed early, especially when they're younger, obviously a little bit different for you now, but I'm sure you can remember those days, right? going them putting the kids down to bed and and then finishing up work and I think it's just a reality right it is but you know it just depends what you want I'm quite driven I love 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 what I do I do have the opportunity and I have had to be a stay-at-home mom um but I choose to do this because it's my passion because it's what I love to do and with that it never seems like a chore you know 
I'm always excited to be at work. Yeah. No, I love that. Thank you so much. And I guess, is there a last word of advice or any anything that you want to like ultimately leave our audience with today? My last word of advice would be, if you are going to see someone for your facial aesthetics, please ask them about their experience. Ask them about their insurance. Ask them to show you their before and after pictures. But mainly, see whether they feel like the right person and that they see the same thing as you see. And I'm telling you, if they've got Miley in their clinic, you're on a winner. Okay, amazing. Well, Dr. Saviga, thank you so much. Where can everyone connect with you, find you, check you out on Instagram, like leave us with all the details. Okay, so the website is www.skinmedical.com. Um, my Instagram ha- Instagram handles are at Skin Medical Clinics with an S okay. or at Dr. Sabika Kareem. Um, or you could call us 01923590057. There you go. You have all that you need. Thank you again. This was so much fun to like be here with the, in the clinic with you. So and thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you everybody for listening. If anyone's interested too in learning a bit more about Miley, go to www.miley.com or you can follow them on Instagram. They're at Miley underscore UK. And if you found value from this episode, share it with a friend, tag us on stories and Instagram at the big move podcast. We love to hear your feedback and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Great. Thank you. Thank you.